I'm off the phone with my brother, Alexander. I wanted to hear about hear him tonight. Occasionally, you know, you go through the call history, and it's ridiculous how I couldn't have talked to him for ten days, but we discussed a few things that happened recently. It's really exciting to hear him. I made some onion rings tonight I told him about. And we discussed some other subjects, and then I ended up talking about my book. And I'm committed to making more readings. Kind of slipped off the path of progress. Why would I slip off the path of progress? I need to continue. As though I can, uh, I don't know. Well, I'm going to use to describe how I, you don't lose motives or whatever ambition. I don't know how I started doing this. The piece I'm sharing tonight is off page 142. Extraterrestrials, September 30, 2008, 10.59 p.m. The injuries inflicted and the dis associated the shock value the requirements and I am required to forget pride forget about everything I want to summarize the ponderings of months liquid feed you born birth in a neck a nasty sexy heap a placenta mask in green hair and a robot dance Extraterrestrials Part 2. There's no date on this piece, although I am on reflection very certain that it was written even as late as 2010. Nearly two years later I saw this and it was uh, an, a, something of an association with the relentless light taps of pressure smashing my brain. This piece is about the uh, a power, not in quantity or in quality, but about things that take up most of the time that are less significant because they aren't considering shock or, or this, you know, just appreciating. In one way, I can certainly discuss the appreciation for this uh, this concept that I'm bringing up in part two is referring to a piece written by uh, uh, Kefner, Kefner, Kefner. Ah, I can't say it for sure. Kef, uh, Her, Her, Herman, I think his name is Herman. Ah, Henry Kuttner. I see, and I read the Ego Machine and. <clears throat> the Ego Machine is an outstanding... I, I just was talking to Alex about this copyright thing. This is something. It's frozen. I am using this free public domain copy, so it's free, and there's no reason why I would ever have a problem quoting this material. Uh, her hilarious. That's hilarious. Alright, here we are. Irritation just increases the frequency of the brain's kappa waves. He was doing a qualitative... He was saying things about this and... Here we are about this. I really want to... Discuss. Oh yeah, it takes a little bit of convincing before the Martin, the main character, will uh, take the conditioning. And now his memories channel, the Matrix. It doesn't say something. His voltage of his brain is altered, and in a way that makes you make you react to your environment in the way that best assures your survival. Imposes the master matrix of your character type. It 
when it kicks in, there is this gorgeous writing. It is gorgeous. 12 hours. Something was happening inside his head. Part 2. Here it is. Ice cold shower. The wind that blew in from the open window bore with it a frightful stench of gasoline, sagebrush, paint, and from the distant commissary, commissary, ham sandwiches. Drunk, he thought frantically. I'm drunk or crazy. He sprang up and spun around wildly. Then catching sight of a crack in the hardwood floor, he tried to walk along it. Because if I can walk a straight line, he thought, I'm not drunk, I'm only crazy. It was not a very comforting thought. He could walk it all right. He could walk a far straighter line than the crack, which he saw now was microscopically jagged. He had, in fact, never felt such a sense of location and equilibrium in his life. His experiment carried him across the room to a wall mirror, and as he strained to look into it, suddenly all confusion settled and seized. The violent sensory perceptions leveled off and returned to normal. That, 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 that. He is not drunk. He was stone cold sober. He's looking at himself. Something about the depths of his brain. Tragically, I have this... Oh, ha, ha, ha. Dreary. I wonder why it... Oh, here. Yeah. You keep me waiting. Me, St. Cyr. Now jump. The rushes are... Martin, do you hear me? Martin gently laid down the receiver on the desk. He turned again toward the mirror, regarded himself critically, frowned. Dreary, he murmured. Distinctly dreary. I wonder why I ever bought this necktie. The softly bellowing telephone distracted him. He studied the instrument briefly, then clapped his hands sharply together an inch from the mouse piece. There was a sharp, anguished cry from the other end of the line. Very good, Martin murmured, turning away. That robot has done me a considerable favor. I should have realized the possibility sooner. This is a, a robot, and I can't become, uh, I read it last night. I have all kinds of conceptual stats I could throw at you about robots and this history and the ego machine, and I absolutely love them. I think you should read it for yourself. Extraterrestrials Part 2 I would sooner walk away than drink your soul. I love you. And you keep the relentless dripping, the soft rain drop upon my brow, in agonizing, relentless, light taps of pressure. Smashing my brain, you smashed it up. And I breathe again. And what you have done to me, as we both freed in the evolution, in the completion of the human alien form, and what is spiritual, physically, Necessary unconsciousness and collective need. A tarp as stupid as it is strange. That is Retona Ray reading 2. At the time of uh, 2.51 on Wednesday, April 11th.